care about what kind of team player you are. They're going to care about whether you show up on time, whether they can trust you, whether you can solve a problem, whether you can think on your own. And we emphasize those traits over our nine and a half months uh, as well. To my seniors, I would simply say this. Uh, I'll be watching you. Not in a creepy call the county, there's a teacher <laughs> stalking our, our graduate sort of way, but uh, I will be watching you to see what you do with this second life of yours. It was nice to hear Mia reference that, uh, the first evidence I've had that you did in fact listen to me a couple of times over the year. And don't forget about the growth mindset. You can do anything you put your mind to. If a human being can learn it, you can learn it. God bless you. I will miss you. Hi, my name is Brett Darger. I'm the ASB Vice President, and it is my immense pleasure to announce our keynote speakers of the 2018 graduation, Mr. Merritt and Mrs. Dion. Where is Mr. Merritt? Oh, here he comes. Good afternoon, and thank you. Thank you, class of 2018, for your hope faith, and courage. Four years ago, Mr. Merritt and I came to Brookings Harbor High School at the same time all of you did. We couldn't wait to meet you. We wanted you to have a freshman year that was full of love, learning, and joy. We saw learning and joy. We also sat, saw sadness and tragedy. Whether you faced good times or hard times, we watched you face them with hope, with faith, and with courage. We challenged you to persevere, pass all of your classes, and set a new standard for freshmen. You did it. You learned what Bruin Pride means and what it looks like. You worked hard. You did not give up. Even when you were low on hope and your faith was shaken. With courage, you completed your classes and earned your credits. You are on your way to graduation. Thank you, class of 2018 for your wonderful, open, loving hearts. For four years, Mr. Merritt and I have watched you care deeply for your friends, your family, your community, and your school. Over and over again, we have watched you give your time and lots of your blood to help others. We have watched you show kindness to each other, support each other, laugh together, learn, live, and love. Now you are here, and you're graduating. Back in September 2014, we challenged you to set a new standard for graduation. And like all the other times, we challenged you to push yourselves to learn, to open your hearts to the world around you. You've done it. Nice job. The question is, what are you going to do next? How are you going to build meaningful, rewarding, healthy lives? What are you going to do to make the most of your gifts? What are you going to do to help others and make the world a better place? To help guide you along your way, I want to share with you a passage from one of my favorite books. It's a memoir written by a highly respected neurosurgeon named Dr. James Doty. He grew up poor, lonely, and scared in a small, dusty, remote town in Central California. The good news is that young James Doty loved going to school. He was in fourth grade, and he set his intention to become a doctor. He faced many obstacles. Too many people did not believe he could reach his goal, but he believed. He studied. He relied on teachers and mentors to help guide him. He stayed faithful to his intention to become a doctor by learning how to quiet his body, calm his mind, and he learned how to follow his heart like all of you are doing. In the book, Dr. Doty tells the, read, the reader how he came up with an easy way to remember the most important things that guide him to live a good life and keep his heart open. He called it the alphabet of the heart. The alphabet of the heart has 10 letters. C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. 10 letters for 10 guiding values. C is for compassion. 
Compassion is the recognition of the suffering of another with the desire to alleviate that suffering. Yet to be compassionate to another, you must be compassionate to yourselves. Many people beat themselves up by being hypercritical, not allowing themselves to enjoy the same kindness they would offer to others. And until one is truly kind to oneself, giving love and kindness to others is often impossible. D is for dignity. Dignity is something innate in every person. It deserves to be acknowledged and recognized. So often we make judgments about someone because of the way they look, how they talk or behave, and many times such judgments are negative and wrong. We have to look at another person and think, they are just like me. They want what I want. They want to be happy. When we look at others and see ourselves, we want to connect and help. E is for equanimity. Equanimity is to have an evenness of temper, even during difficult times. Keeping an evenness of temperament allows for clarity of mind. F is for forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the greatest gifts one can give to another. It is also one of the greatest gifts we can give to ourselves. Many have used the analogy that holding anger or hostility against another you feel has wronged you is like drinking poison and hoping it kills the other person. It doesn't work. It poisons you. It poisons your interactions with others. It poisons your outlook on the world. Ultimately, it makes you a prisoner in a jail where you hold the key, yet you won't unlock the door. The reality is that each of us in our lives have wronged others. We are frail, fragile beings who at various times in our lives have not lived up to our ideal and have injured or hurt another. G is for gratitude. Gratitude is the recognition of the blessing that your life is, even with all the pain and suffering. It takes little effort to see how so many in the world are suffering and in pain. People whose circumstances allow little hope for a better life. Too often we look at each other and feel jealous or envious. Simply taking a few moments to have gratitude has a huge effect on your mental attitude. You suddenly recognize how blessed you are. H is for humility. Humility is an attribute that for many of us is hard to practice. We have pride about who we are or what we have accomplished. We want to tell and show others how important we are, how much better we are than someone else. The reality is that such feelings are actually a statement of our own insecurity. We are searching for acknowledgement and worth outside of ourselves, yet doing so separates us from others. It's like being put in solitary confinement. It's a lonely place to be. It's only when we recognize that, like us, every person has positive and negative attributes, and only when we look at one another as equals that we can truly connect it is that connection of common humanity that frees us to open our hearts and care unconditionally. I is for integrity. Integrity requires intention. It requires defining those values that are most important to you. It means consistently practicing those values in, order, in regard to your interaction with others. Our values can easily disintegrate and the disintegration can at first be imperceptible. If we compromise our integrity once, it becomes that much easier to do it again. Few start out with such intent. Be vigilant and diligent and always strive to do the right thing. J is for justice. Justice is a recognition that within each of us there lives a desire to see that right be done. It is easier when we have resources and privilege to have justice. Yet we need to guard justice for the weak and the vulnerable. It is our responsibility to seek justice for the vulnerable, to care for the weak, to give to the poor. That is what defines our society and our humanity and gives meaning to one's life. K is for kindness. Kindness is a concern for others and is often thought of as the active component of compassion. A desire to see others cared for with no desire for personal benefit or recognition. 
The extraordinary thing is that research is now finding that your act of kindness not only benefits those who receive your kindness, but benefits you as well. The act of kindness ripples out, and, it more, and it's more likely that your friends and those around you will be kind. Kindness is a social contagion that puts our society right. The last letter is L. L is for love. Love, when given freely, changes everyone and everything. It is love that contains all virtues. It is love that heals all wounds. Ultimately, it is not our technology or our medicine, but our love that heals. And it is love that holds our humanity. C D E F G H I J K L. Remember those things that will keep your hearts open and ready to lead you where you need to go. Look to your futures with hope, stay faithful to your alphabet of the heart, and move on with courage. When I think of all of you going out into the world, I remember a story Mr. Merritt told me once about a Bruin he met on a train late one night. Do you remember that story, Mr. Merritt? <laughs> this microphone on? <laughs> it's important to tell this story right. It was told to me by, by an old Bruin long time ago, and he, uh, his advice really uh, shaped, shaped my future and helped uh, prepare me for working with your kids at Brookings Harbor High School. I'm about to tell his story right here. So I want y'all to sing along too. You're gonna know this tune. This is uh, dedicated to the class of 2018. Make sure we got it here. Rebels and 